Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, on the Juan Manuel Marquez, Mike Alvarado fight. More beer for us. Marquez delivered. He fought an excellent fight. Right, the combinations are still there. I thought the angles favored him. He's a little bit shorter than Alvarado. Marquez likes to bend a little bit and is an excellent body puncher. Right, the height gap actually made it easier for Marquez to land body shots, to bend over, to outbox Alvarado, to give the taller fighter less to hit. Right, Alvarado had to bend over himself to get to Marquez. Marquez, of course, is a master counterpuncher that played into his strengths. Right, Marquez was fighting like Marquez. Mike Alvarado had to reach for him a little bit in a style that is a little bit different than what Alvarado is accustomed to. Right, I thought the angles favored Marquez. Marquez still has the timing. There's an interview here online where Timothy Bradley talks about how in his entire career Marquez is the best counterpuncher he's faced. Understand that Marquez Bradley fight is a recent fight. What Bradley was telling you is that Marquez in his early 40s now, he may have been in his late 30s when he fought Bradley, is still an elite counterpuncher. And keep in mind, Timothy Bradley has fought Devin Alexander, Manny Pacquiao, Kendall Holt, Lamont Peterson, Wishlin Provotnikov, more than most fighters, right? He's fought high-level opposition. But what I want to do is actually pursue an angle here because I enjoyed this fight quite a bit. I'm going to watch this fight several times in the future because I thought this fight is really a paradigm on how to do things, right? Now, in boxing, it's my belief that we are all cornermen, right? The beauty of the sport is we can all be strategists, right? The sport is more accessible than, let's say, American football, where you're looking at too many moving parts, right? Too many men on the field. Strategies that include, you know, terms that the quarterback shouts out audibles at the line of scrimmage, different guys running different patterns on different plays against defenses that might be blitzing, zone blitzing, sitting back in coverage. I don't believe the casual American football fan can step in and coach a football team, right? The sport's too advanced for that. Now, the beauty of boxing is boxing's also advanced. But there aren't 11 men per side out on the field, right? In boxing, it's only two men. I think we all intuitively understand a bar fight, right? When we watch two guys boxing, granted, boxing's a little bit different than fighting. But we all understand what it's like to throw a punch. You can actually see a great defensive fighter make the other man miss, right? All of us, whether we understand all of the terminology in the sport or not, can look at boxing and say, you know what, here's what I would have done differently to win the fight, right? I think we also know, too, that if you have 10 men in a bar talking about a fight, you're going to have 10 different opinions on what each fighter should have done to win the fight. You'll even watch a fight, like I watched this fight, and you'll hear a cornerman 
say to his fighter as Mike Alvarado's corner says to him in the middle of the fight you know pretty much forget boxing you need to go in there and just impose yourself on the other man and you can hear that advice and think this is crazy I disagree completely isn't the worst possible way to fight a sharpshooting technician, a counterpuncher like Juan Manuel Marquez to literally throw caution to the wind and to try to, you know, roughhouse tactics, right? Whereas another fan, you know, who knows the sport better than I, let's say an actual corner man, might disagree and say, no, well, Mike should try to impose. Right? I think the dialogue brings out the best in the sport. I believe the guys in the corner are very different. The advice Nacho Beristain might give in a fight can be different than the advice Freddie Roach would give in the fight. But yet both are elite trainers. Right? You have boxers who, like Amir Khan, have left Freddie Roach and then have claimed that their new trainer, Virgil Hunter, in the Khan case, has taught him new tricks. Right? You have other fighters, Demetrius Andre, who were with Virgil Hunter and left Virgil Hunter to be back with his father, who trains him, because he feels more comfortable in that situation. Understand, even the elite trainers don't agree on the math of the sport. It is the sweet science. So let's talk about this fight. I thought it was brilliant on both sides of the fight. Mike Alvarado lost the fight. I thought he was brilliant. Let me say this too. You know, he fought the fight, in my opinion, that Marcus Maidana should have fought against Floyd Mayweather. Let's talk about it. In my opinion, boxing should not be viewed, and I believe it's a mistake to view boxing as a cumulative score sport, like baseball, basketball, or football. Right? In boxing, there are knockouts. In fact, for most fighters, in fact, for most of the elite fighters, think Klitschko, think Kovalev, but not just them. Think Mayweather, think Frotch, think Ray Leonard, think Ray Robinson, think Marcus Maidana, think Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. and Jr. For most fighters, more than 50% of their fights end by knockout. Not total score, but knockout. Right? Such that the judges' scorecards don't matter in the ultimate resolution of the fight. Right? What that means, I don't think we pay enough attention to this, is that unlike other sports, right? Basketball, baseball, football, Unlike other sports, the knockout makes a whole new group of opponents viable, right? In basketball, I have to try to outscore the Miami Heat for four quarters, right? In other words, at the end of four quarters, for me to win that game, my team needs to have more points than the Miami Heat. If my team just isn't capable of getting more points than the Miami Heat after four quarters, we're not viable against the Heat. In boxing, it's different. If I can knock out the Miami Heat at any time during the match, then I don't have to ever be able to score more points than them. The knockout dictates. Let me point out. Knockouts dictate in most fights. Right? Marcus Maidana, by the way, 
more than 60% of his fights end by knockout. If we're going to talk about the judges' scorecards, they only matter in 40% of his fights. Right? Just take a look at knockout ratios. So, let me say this. The goal of fighters looking for knockouts, fighters who know that they don't have the skill level to compete with, let's say, a favorite like Marquez on the scorecards, right? The goal of those fighters is to create a moment, right? A moment when they can get the knockout. That should be their entire agenda in the ring. You're in the ring with Floyd Mayweather. If you realize that athletically, he has the faster feet and the faster hands. And then you realize that on a skill level, right, on a talent level, his timing is better than yours. His accuracy is better than yours. His understanding of how to play chess in the ring is better than yours. Right? His angles are better than yours. And by that I mean you see him and somehow he's always out of position for you to land the punch you want. Let's say your right hand heavy. That's your money punch. You're fighting Mayweather and whether he has a hand up or not he's just not in position for you to land your haymaker. Right? You're never comfortable enough to land your haymaker. When he gets in position, suddenly he's hitting you with the lead left hook and you don't have time to land your haymaker. And then you realize that this is all by design. He's out of position for your right hand because he's developed positioning as a defensive strategy. So if you're in the ring with Mayweather and you realize that you don't have the athleticism, nor do you have the talent and skill level to outscore him on the judges' scorecards. Right? You're in the ring with Juan Manuel Marquez. And you realize that he's bending under your punches. That he's just a better marksman than you are. Right? That he actually has faster hands than the public realizes. That he's throwing three, four, and five punch combinations as counters to what you're doing. That he subtly is bending at the waist so that you can't find his head. He's rolling with punches. He also has a hand up. And as you go looking for his head, he's riddling you with combinations. And they're accurate. You can't even predict the combinations. Because it's not a left, right, left, right. It's a left, 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 right hand. Left, left, right hand. Right? You can't figure out the pattern. If you're an opponent and you know you can't beat the guy on the scorecard, then your entire purpose of being in the ring is to set up a moment where you can end the fight so it doesn't get to the scorecards. At least a moment where you can knock down your opponent because even elite fighters get knocked down. Look at the career of Andre Ward. He's been knocked down. Look at the career of Bernard Hopkins. 
He's been knocked down in multiple fights. Most recently, Jean Pascal. Sergei Kovalev looks unbeatable right now. He was knocked down by Darnell Boone. Adonis Stevenson. Believe it or not, the same Darnell Boone knocked down Adonis Stevenson. Manny Pacquiao. Forget the most recent Pacquiao Marquez fight. If you look on Pacquiao's resume, you're going to find out that he's been down in other fights. Right? The Tori Alba fight. Devastating knockout. Timothy Bradley. I'm sure every morning Bradley looks at his head on his shoulders and feels grateful because it looked to me like he almost got decapitated by Kendall Holt. Knocked off his feet. Hits the canvas hard. The Wuchlin Provodnikov fight. I thought Bradley almost gets decapitated there too. Think about how that fight ends. Bradley takes a knee. By his own admission, if Bradley kept standing, he could have been stopped. Right? The closest Mayweather fight. Let me say this. It's not his fight against Marcus McDonough. I would say it's not even the first Castillo fight. The closest Mayweather fight. The closest Mayweather has come to losing is the Shane Mosley fight, isn't it? Mosley hits him. To quote or paraphrase the great Thomas Hearns, Mayweather then holds on to Mosley as if he were his woman. Right? Mayweather is buzzed. The knees buckle. One more big right hand, and that knockout was viable. Understand the way knockouts are. You get dropped, you might not get to your feet before the count of ten. You could even be conscious on the canvas. Oscar De La Hoya against Bernard Hopkins and be unable to beat the camp. Once you hit the deck, there's no guarantee you get conscious fast enough to continue in the fight. Right? Shane Mosley had a moment in that Mayweather fight. Let me say this too. Boxing announcers do a great job right but the current announcing structure where they tell you who won the latest round right and they keep you apprised of their scorecard on who's winning the fight cumulatively right misses a significant part of the sports nuance we know it does because many elite fighters win more than half their fights by knockout, right? What the current structure misses many times. Sometimes you do have guys there. Emmanuel Stewart was a master at talking about the bigger picture than the current total score in the fight. But understand that and they do a great job, but when HBO is broadcasting a fight like the Marquez fight, and they keep telling you, oh, Marquez has won the first round. Marquez has won the second round. Marquez has won the third round. He's dominating this fight. Understand it misses punchers like Alvarado trying to set up moments over several rounds. Right? He's not trying to win a round. He's trying to win a fight. Right? It misses him trying to set up moments over several rounds by selling fake strategy, selling fake angles, selling fake punch patterns, 
favoring two or three hard body shots over the three minutes of a round over the higher volume more visible head shots that judges prefer right why the body shots because that's the fastest way to deplete your opponent keep in mind here he was fighting a 40 year old right and of course it misses a guy like Alvarado deciding hey I'm gonna pursue a strategy that forces my senior citizen opponent to work for three minutes of the round even if the strategy is not gonna win me the round because eventually the hope is my older opponent is gonna get tired then my real agenda what I'm really in the ring to do can reveal itself right this is poker folks right it's bluff 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 here's my hand now let's talk about the fight I know I'm 20 minutes into the video let me just say this the opening rounds Alvarado comes out it's a fake strategy it's beautiful stuff first Alvarado is doing a lot of foot feints to check out the angles he hasn't fought Marquez before so he's doing foot feints and stuff like that seeing which way Marquez goes then he starts fighting on his back foot we all know that that's not how Mike Alvarado intended to win the fight you want a losing strategy in a fight try out boxing one man well Marquez right it's not gonna happen so of course Alvarado comes out but he's forcing Marquez to come forward He's forcing a 40-year-old to actually work a bit, right? A little bit later, I noticed that Alvarado's throwing a right hand. He's coming in throwing big right hands, but he's throwing them a little bit wide, right? I was actually encouraged by that because, as I like to say, a fighter needs to kind of like hint at danger. He needs to remind Marquez. I have a big punch. I'm trying to hit a home run. In baseball, we say to batters, don't crowd the plate, right? The pitcher will come off the strike zone up inside with a fastball just to remind the batter, hey, there's a risk of injury here. Hey, remember me? I throw 95 miles an hour. Don't lean over the plate. Right? My pitches can hurt you if you get reckless. So Alvarado comes in with some wide right hands. Right? I thought it was brilliant stuff. Alvarado's not there trying to win on the scorecards. The first six rounds of the fight. All Alvarado is trying to do is to force Marquez to work, land some good body shots, hide the angles of his real punches right he's doing enough to look like he's in the fight if anyone knows he was losing the round it's him because his corners telling him he's losing the fight right you know he knows he's in with a master counter puncher after all he's the one getting hit with the counter punches but he's hanging around I don't believe he showed Marquez his hand he has Marquez throwing a lot of punches. He's backing up at times. He comes in with wide right hands. We don't even know if Alvarado can shorten that right hand. Marquez, who of course is adjusting his game to Alvarado's game, you know, figures out how to block Alvarado's shots, knows where they're coming, right? You know, creates his defensive strategy based on what Alvarado is showing him. The question is, is what Alvarado is showing him Alvarado's real agenda? So we get to the eighth round. Alvarado gets caught. 
goes down. Fair enough. Alvarado gets back up. Alvarado is fighting a great fighter who still has elite counterpunching skills. Right? It's a right hand that drops Alvarado. Okay. Fair enough. But then Alvarado gets the payoff. This is the reason why he's been fighting the entire fight. It's the ninth round. I know in the press, all you're hearing about is the score on the judges scorecards. Right? Understand, Manny Pacquiao has not knocked down Marquez since the second Pacquiao Marquez fight. Right? This is not a flash knockdown. You're going to see Mike Alvarado on a counter shorten his right hand. He's been throwing that right hand wide practically the entire fight. He comes in, it's a counter. I believe he's thought of this punch for rounds. It's a counter. Alvarado comes in. This is the payoff for the entire fight. He shortens the right hand. He hits Marquez flush. Marquez goes down. Right? My point to you is simply, had that punch closed the show, Mike Alvarado would be in line to fight Manny Pacquiao to fight for the belt at 147 pounds. Had that punch closed the show, Mike Alvarado right now would be one of the hottest names in the sport. Think about it too. Unlike the first Juan Diaz fight, Unlike some other fights, the second Manny Pacquiao fight, the first Marquez Pacquiao fight, this isn't an early knockdown. This is not first round, Marquez gets up after three knockdowns, then is able to go the rest of the fight. Why? Because he was knocked down when he was fully functional early in a fight where he's fresh. Right? This isn't the second. Pacquiao-Marquez fight. Where Marquez goes down, I believe it's something like the third round. Is too fresh. Gets up, is able to go the rest of the fight. No, this is qualitatively different. This is the ninth round. Right? This is a hard puncher. Younger guy. Hitting a 40-year-old flush. Dropping him in the ninth round. Right? Keep in mind, too. I know this is going to be controversial. I would argue, and I agree with Harold Letterman here, that Alvarado had won the seventh round. Understand, Alvarado is play acting the first six rounds. The real agenda starts to show itself in the second half of the fight. If Marquez isn't supremely conditioned, then the raised tempo and heavy punches and changed angles in the second half of the fight could stop him. Well, Marquez gets off the canvas. Right? He gets off the canvas. He's able to survive the round. So then Alvarado comes back. It's masterful. The 11th round. Don't go by the press reports. Go by the footage. Alvarado comes in and again shortens his punch. Again, nails Marquez. Marquez stumbles backwards. He's almost knocked down a second time in the fight. But he gets his balance. Why? Because it's Juan Manuel Marquez. Because Marquez is a master at balance. Because Marquez has a chance. Because Marquez, as he put it before the fight, was in some of the best shape of his life. Right? So, Alvarado sets up moments, is unable to deliver on them. Right? The fight ends, the scores are wide. 
People say, oh, Alvarado was dominated. I'm telling you, Mike Alvarado, I'm positive, knows right now he wasn't dominated. Right? He's looking at the footage. He knows he saved himself for those moments. The moments didn't result in a knockout. They resulted in a knockdown and staggering Marquez. Right? I'm sure Mike had other moments in that fight that Marquez was able to defense his way out of. Right? But make no mistake, this is a fight where Marquez gets dropped late. I know I had Marquez in the fight. I was worried. The ninth round was masterful. Compare and contrast the punch that Alvarado throws to knock down Marquez. It's a short right hand with the right hands that Alvarado's throwing early in the fight where he's just leaping in and throwing wider punches. Right? If you're playing a master chess player, you've got to have strategy. I thought Alvarado did. Right? I thought this was a excellent attempt at toppling Juan Manuel Marquez. I don't believe for a second Alvarado actually was trying to win any of the first six rounds of the fight. I think his strategy was to figure out the angle, sell Marquez on a wide right hand, sell Marquez on Alvarado leaning back, trying to be a lead puncher more than a counter puncher, then come in with the tight counter. When Marquez got a little bit sloppy one round after Alvarado had hit the deck. Right? The scorecards are wide. The fight's a lot closer than the scorecards. I applaud both men. Marquez is still an elite counterpuncher that most fighters don't have a shot of beating on the scorecards. Right? Alvarado is still cagey. I thought it was brilliant. Keep in mind, Alvarado lost many of the early rounds against Breedis Prescott, was able to have a moment late in that fight where he closed the show. Here, the moment came up short. But I don't believe the man did. I was very impressed by Mike Alvarado. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me just say, too, that if you don't have elite foot speed, if you're not Timothy Bradley, if you can't maneuver around the ring and simply outmaneuver Juan Manuel Marquez, right? And if you're not a supreme boxer, if you're not Floyd Mayweather, right, then you're going to have a very hard time with Juan Manuel Marquez. Right? He might have a hard time with guys who just have a lot of youth, a lot of energy, who can, you know, just outwork him perhaps and stuff like that. But this is a very dangerous fighter, still, at 40. Bob Arum is talking about trying to match Marquez against Golden Boy fighters if Marquez doesn't agree to fight Manny Pacquiao. Right? Let me just say, Marquez would be viable against any Golden Boy fighter, not named Floyd Mayweather. Right? I know Mayweather is his own guy, but he works with Golden Boy and Richard Schaefer. Right? Simply because Marquez, up close, has few peers. Right? A guy literally is going to have to be outside, jumping in with targeted shots. Right? I don't believe you can stand in front of Marquez, play chess for 12 rounds, and expect to come out on top on the scorecards. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online and let's discuss it. Thanks for stopping by.